Hey everybody, welcome to Love Always Adventure Often. That was, I don't know. Anyway, this is our adventure channel and currently it's a bus building channel. And uh, you know, one of the most common questions we've gotten since we bought our bus was, how did you guys choose your bus? Um, there's so many different factors that go into choosing the right bus for a schoolie conversion. So that's why I decided to do this video, to tell you a little bit more about why we decided on our bus and some things that you can look for when trying to find a bus of your own for a schoolie conversion. There we go. So when thinking about buying a bus, one of the first things I think you should think about is style. There's a couple of different styles. There's not a ton of choices when you're looking at a school bus, but there's a couple of different choices and there's some advantages and disadvantages to each. It's more than just aesthetics. Now, when we first started looking for our bus, we definitely wanted a dog nose. You have the dog nose that has the, you know, the hood that goes out and the windshield set back a little bit farther. There's a flat nose like this one. This one's a flat nose. So basically it's flat from ceiling to floor. Imagine that flat nose, like anybody needed that explained to them. And then there's some, a couple of other styles like some shorties or some crowns or different things like that. But I'm gonna focus on the two main types, which is the dog nose and the flat nose. When we first started looking, we were convinced we wanted a dog nose because we liked the look better. Ultimately, there's a few things that played into our decision to buy a flat nose. One of the biggest reasons we decided to go with a flat nose, you get a couple more feet of living space in a flat nose than you do in a dog nose full length bus, for the most part. Second, it's the bus we could find. It was the bus closest to us that really fit our requirements as far as mechanically, shape, and price. We looked at a few dog nose buses, but they just didn't fit our requirements. So what style do you prefer? The dog nose or the flat nose like Busta Brown the bus here? Tell me in the comments and tell me why you like that style. All right, my friends. The next thing you should consider is the engine and probably the transmission, but I'm gonna talk specifically about the engine right now. We were really set on a Cummins diesel engine. We knew that we wanted diesel because of how well they perform over time, historically, right? But that's not the case for all engines and all buses. Now, one thing that you'll see talked about a lot on these forums and Facebook groups is that school buses run forever. So you'll see posts like, hey, I just picked up my bus, has a diesel, a Cummins diesel engine with only 130,000 miles and it's gonna run forever. The problem is, is most of these people don't know the maintenance history on their bus. We don't know the maintenance history on our bus. It's a gamble. It's obviously good to know the mileage on the odometer of your bus. However, that only accounts for a fraction of the wear and tear on the engine. If you think about how buses run, they actually don't usually drive a lot of miles. They're usually you know, restricted to a neighborhood or an area of a city but they idle for hours and hours. When they take teams to sporting events, they usually idle the entire time. Or when they go and get kids, when they're waiting for kids to load and unload, they're idling. When they want the bus to warm up, they're idling for a half hour. So we can't just look at the mileage that reads on the odometer of the bus. We have to consider the wear and tear of idle on the engine as well. So don't believe anybody when they tell you school buses will run forever. So let's talk about rust for a minute. Every bus converter's nightmare. You know, these buses have been through a couple of lifetimes of wear and tear. That means weather, salt on the roads, you name it, they've been through it. And so obviously anything built completely out of metal is going to rust over time. So you really need to consider and understand the severity of rust and what it's gonna to take to get rid of it. So there's two different types of rust that you're gonna to wanna to be able to identify. The first one is surface rust, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's just discoloration on the surface. This is easy to take care of, well, relatively easy. It took us about a day to grind down the surface rust of this floor. The rust we really need to be concerned with is cancerous rust. Cancerous rust is when the structural integrity of the metal has been compromised because of rust. You can identify this in a couple of different ways. There'll be flaky red powdery pieces that will fall off of the metal, or there will actually be holes in the metal, or just somehow the structural integrity of the metal has been compromised because of rust. This rust is incredibly difficult to take care of, and it must be taken care of right, 
or the problem will come right back. For us, we looked at a dog nose bus when we were shopping that we absolutely loved. We loved the style, the look, the year, all of that kind of stuff. But ultimately we walked away because it had so much cancerous rust and we weren't about to take on the project of completely replacing the pan of the entire bus. Now, this can be done, but it takes time, it takes knowledge, and it takes the right equipment. I strongly encourage you to look for a bus that doesn't have these rusting issues. Now you're gonna wanna inspect the entire bus for rust, but there's a couple of specific places that are prone to rust more than others that you're gonna really wanna check out. So under the bus, on the chassis, you wanna make sure that the chassis of the bus, meaning the frame, the underneath frame of the bus, doesn't have any of these cancerous rust issues. Second is the pan of the bus or the floor. It's possible that this is difficult to look at because buses have plywood over the pan or over the metal of the floor. And so the rust could be between that wood and that metal. So really, it's kind of a gamble as to what you find when you pull up that floor. But you can get up underneath the bus and get a good idea of the shape of the pan of the bus as you inspect it before you buy it. And lastly, the wheel wells. The front and back of the wheel wells are probably the most common place for cancerous rust. And they also happen to be some of the most difficult places to repair. So when considering purchasing a bus, make sure you inspect those three areas really well and know what it's gonna take to remediate that rust. So another really big consideration for us when thinking about what bus we wanted to buy was tires. And here's why. They are freaking expensive. Each one of these tires can cost at least $500 to replace. If we're, doing, if we're talking about the whole bus, that's $3,000 in rubber. So as we were bus shopping, we knew tires had to be a big consideration because they wear out and they have to be in good condition. So as you're looking at buses, look at the depth of the tread and how much wear there is on the tires. That can tell you how much money you're gonna need to put into the bus right away and it should affect the purchase price which is my next point all right saving the best for last money how much should I pay for a bus we get the question all the time this is so arbitrary and there's so much to consider as you've already seen I mean you should consider what shape are the tires in how much rust is there what's the age how many miles how much maintenance has been done on it how much maintenance needs to be done on it. Now we paid 4,500 for our bus. It's a 2001 with 114,000 miles showing on the odometer. Now I know for market value, I paid anywhere between 500 and $1,000 too much for our bus. But here's why. When we bought our bus, the demo was about 75% done. The ceiling panels were taken out, the benches were taken out, and the flooring was taken out already. So to me, that was worth $500 to $1,000 that I would save buying a bus that needed to be completely demoed. I've seen people go through that demo process and I didn't want any part of it. In addition to the demo already being done, the tires were in perfect shape. The engine batteries were brand new and they had just done a few different little maintenance things to bring up the value of the bus. Every bus you look at is going to be in a different condition at a different stage of its life and its conversion. So you have to consider all of these things when settling on a price. Okay, my friends, my final point in this video is please, please, please don't buy a bus without taking it to an experienced diesel mechanic or somebody who is experienced in fleet buses that they can look it over for you. They can look over the engine, the transmission, the lines, the belts, the frame, the all everything. And they can tell you some things that you would never be able to find with your limited knowledge about school buses. And finally, in the video description, I have linked a long list. It's a spreadsheet, basically a checklist of things you should look at when you're looking at buses. And there's different columns where you can compare different buses that you're considering purchasing. I hope that's a helpful tool to you. I wish I would have had that when I was looking at the eight or nine different buses that we looked at before we finally pulled the trigger on this one. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Love always, adventure often. Wow, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week and remember to love always and adventure often.